evening. Welcome to another Cat Space Adventures episode. I am Cat. With me is my adorable buckets, my bro Leon, and my sis Luna. Good evening. Good evening. Good Hello. Coming from Sydney, Australia, right now. Um, this podcast is in celebration of our very own Mary Donaldson. She is married to at the moment Crown Prince Frederick who is about to be King Frederick X and our very own is going to be sitting on the throne as Queen Mary, a very Australian Mary Donaldson. And this is a celebration podcast of those two lovebirds. But before we start, before we start, I would like to say thank you to the new subscribers and a big massive shout out to at Timothy Cleaver 3381 who noticed subscribe and left me some wonderful comments on our podcast. We hope you enjoyed this one and let us know what you think. Thank you for subscribing, Timothy. We hope you enjoy and to the new ones and viewers. This is what it's all about. We love you guys so much. Okay, so let's get the show on the road. We're gonna take turns. All right. Tell us these questions. Question one. With Mary becoming queen, what will that mean for Australia, Leon? Oh, that'll definitely improve our standings. What, what Denmark, I believe? Uh, Denmark. She becoming the queen of Denmark? It'll definitely, yeah. I, I guess it will make Denmark more of a tourism, uh, a boost for tourism. I, I'm guessing it'll make a boost for tourism, at least. Knowing that we do have our very own queen who is from, what, Tasmania, right? Tasmania, right. so um, okay. I definitely agree with, I, I think um, it'll definitely boost tourism, it'll make people want to visit uh, Denmark and maybe find a queen of their own. Luna, same question, with Mary becoming queen, what will that mean for Australia? <clears throat> More publicity. Um, also, we're going to have our own one of our own become like a, a high up royal. So at the end of the day, that's not something that even though we you know, kind of follow along with England, we don't actually have our own here in this country. And I think having an Australian a part of that type of lifestyle is something that's not really heard of often. Um, so yeah, it's going to mean a lot more publicity it's going to mean more um, advertising, more people are going to be like, oh, she's from Australia, let me check that out. The standing with um, Denmark is going to be stronger. Um, yeah. Well, buckets. With Mary becoming queen, what will that mean for Australia? Well, I'd like to say that Tasmania isn't going to get such a bad rap anymore. Your uh, Tasmania's tourism will go through the roof, mm -hmm. knowing that a queen came from there. Um, I also think that um, we might actually get more royal visits from um, the Denmark royals um, now that, um, you know, um, Mary is from there and of course her family is also from there as well. Um, also, um, Denmark will actually have, may even um, strengthen relations with Australia. Um, and also, I think that um, people will will actually look at uh, Mary like the new Diana, because at the moment she hasn't really done anything wrong, and she's not very controversial at the moment. So, I I think um, you know the Australian people will will kind of warm up to the idea of having a monarchy, even though it's not technically our monarchy. I think people, more Australians will will actually appreciate that one of their own has become a queen and um, may even become royalists themselves. For me, what does that mean for Australia? I agree with all of you. You've all said it beautifully. I think this is going to this is out of a fairy tale. This is out of a fairy tale no one saw coming. And the fact that she's going to be sitting on her own throne, known as Queen, um, is going is going to make people celebrate because the last time people celebrated a royal wedding 
was uh, was William and Kate's, and that was a big one. Even though she was from Tasmania, I think the whole of Australia is looking forward to celebrating, you know, a union that's going to be tied to Denmark forever, mm -hmm. and it's going to be Australia, Australia's union to Denmark, even though we're under the British monarchy their ties are going to be solidified mm -hmm. and it's going to make a big impact on who we are and what we stand for and believe in and i think this is insane I can't, i'm 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 elated next question as queen mary succeeds the throne will she have more of a role to play within australia leon um more of a role within australia i don't think so um because she is technically the queen of Denmark. Um, I don't believe that she would have a bigger role in Australia, but I think a lot of people will look up to her like you, clearly. Uh, Kat, you, because uh, I know how excited you are of uh, Queen Mary's ascension to queen. Um, a lot of people will look up, a lot of people will look up to Mary, or I should say Queen Mary, um, but I don't think it'll have much of a difference here in Australia, but a few, a few Royal diehards will uh, find it very significant here in Australia. Luna, same question. As Queen Mary succeeds the throne, will she have more of a role to play within Australia? I don't think so. Uh, maybe within interviews and publicity, yes. Uh, in terms of royal stature, no, I don't think. Obviously, with, with, when any royals come here, they kind of treat them with respect and they dignity, and you know, they give them um their like you know whatever it is that they do, they give them their places to go and escape to and whatever. So, I don't think that she would not get any of those um like comforts as well. Um, but I don't think that's purely just because she's Australian. I think that's because she's royal. Or married to going to marry into royalty. Buckets. As Queen Mary succeeds the throne, will she have more of a role to play within Australia? Well, okay, because she's a royal uh, and because she's Australian, she will obviously have diplomatic immunity from the, the Australian government. That, that, that's a given, right? Um, there might be some trade deals that. Uh, Mary could potentially make with Australia that would be helpful or even um, in their own um, embassies there might be something there um, you know where she might show up um, in the in the Danish embassy in Australia there might be something there uh, as far as a more political um, type of role I don't believe there's going to be a political role for her because remember, Australia is still under um, the Commonwealth or a Commonwealth nation, um, even though that is quite controversial at the moment. Um, and Denmark does not control um, Australian politics. Um, they don't even influence Australian politics and they're not even allowed to Australian influence politics. Maybe if um, um, Mary starts up a couple of charities in Australia, that might make the difference and that has been done before with other governments um like for example uh the queen um creating uh, the crs in australia that's literally one country giving money to another country to help people find jobs that's a possibility but as far as any political involvement it's highly unlikely you all answered that so amazingly. So I'm going to skip my bun and go to the next one. Because uh, you've all said it for me. Will we get a public holiday out of proclamation with Queen Mary and King Frederick the Tenth Leon? Uh, as much as I, I'd imagine a lot of people would want that, I don't believe that would be happening. We won't, I doubt we will get a public holiday, even though. Um, Mary will become queen, and I've just had a look at the run sheet here. Uh, let's see, it's expected to be 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. The Danish Prime Minister proclaims Frederick and Mary as the king and queen on the balcony of the Christianborg Palace 
that's expected to be at 1 a.m. tomorrow morning for those people who are night owls and who are watching this thing live, which uh, nobody is watching this thing live, so it was all taped. Um, I don't, in all honesty, I don't believe that we're going to get a public holiday out of this. I know a lot of people would like to see that, but I can't see that happening. Luna, same question. Will we get a public holiday out of proclamation with Queen Mary and King Frederick X? Of course not. Um, just because she's Australian, has got no. That's like, that's like saying we're gonna. If Australians go over to America, can they go stay over at Hugh Jackman's house and have a barbecue? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a nice thought, but it's not gonna happen. So, no, I don't think we're gonna get that. I mean, you guys oppose it, but I am gonna remain optimistic and realistic. <laughs> that we a public holiday and in proclamation of our very own because we're Australians, it's what we do best. We need a public yeah. holiday. We need hey, a you know you don't you don't know for sure. We've got to wait for the Danish uh, Prime Minister's proclamation of whether or not we do. But then again, I suppose he has to clear that with the Prime Minister of Australia first. I'd imagine exactly because. If he's going to proclaim them king and queen, and there's going to be lots of Aussies, mind you, and Danish people um, in Denmark with Australian flags and Danish flags, you would think that the royals would, or whoever's in charge would speak to our prime minister and say, hey, you know Mary's becoming queen, you should think about having a day of celebration. And I'm I'm not Monica's summer, I was, so I'm going to stay in hope. Yeah, you asked me that question? Yeah. Okay, right. Here's the thing. We have a prime minister that's a Republican. He doesn't actually like the royals very much. Well, I mean, he likes the royals, but he would prefer to have a republic. So we're not going to get, as much as I would love to have um, a public holiday, because everyone knows Australians love their public holidays. You know, most of us don't even like bankers, but we have more banking holidays, right? Um, you know, I, as much as I would love a public holiday um, in remembrance of um, Mary's wedding, um, I we're not going to get one, unfortunately, because, um, well, you know, Denmark have no claim on um, Australia. Um, and... Um, as much as I would love to petition for one, I mean, like, let's be honest. I mean, Australians would have have a holiday for anything, you know. But we're not going to get it. That's not going to happen. Sadly. It's funny because I know that I know that if we were given the opportunity, every Australian would vote yes on that. <laughs> <laughs> Next question: Are Australians preferring the Danish royals over the British royals, Leon? Um. I'd say yes, for sure, because right now, as you know, uh, King Charles is a very polarizing uh, figure here in Australia, at least. Um, I think a lot of a lot of them, a lot of uh, royalists will actually pick Mary over King Charles. No question about that. Um, yeah, I, so I I believe that mainly mainly because we're playing the suck up thing. She's Australian, but like I said, straight off the bat. King Charles is a very polarizing uh, figure here in Australia. Uh, Luna, same question. Are Australians preferring the Danish royals over the British royals? To be honest, I don't know. I have not been keeping up with the media, but this is what I can say that I do know. For some reason, the tabloids here eat up the British royals and they absolutely make them into a celebrity and um it's all in my words you know a little bit of propaganda kind of um in a way um but in terms of the danish society i don't know i haven't really looked on articles or like magazines at the moment but i have not seen one thing about the danish i have not seen one article one thing pop up on my social media not one thing has popped up um about it so that's all i can say to speak to it Buckets, are Australians preferring the Danish royals over the British royals? They prefer certain Danes. So they don't have an issue with um, Queen Margarita. Is it how I pronounce Margarita. It? Margarita. 
um, uh, they don't have a problem with Mary because she's Australian. But when Frederick had an affair, um, a lot of Mary's fans um, literally were up in arms that Frederick had an affair, um, alleged. With, alleged affair. Um, alleged. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say alleged because <laughs> that that it actually is, you know, fair. Um, with another woman, and um, a lot of people actually love Mary because they remind her, uh, they remind them of of Diana. And I think we all miss Diana a lot. And I think that um, the the Danes version, they don't want to get rid of Mary because she's really, really good for publicity and she hasn't done anything wrong. But she's not, like I said, she wasn't, she's not a controversial um, member. Whereas Harry is in the newspapers all the time for some something he's always doing. Um, Megan is always in the newspapers for something controversial. Um, everyone hates King Charles. Um, ever since Queen Elizabeth II has died, um, it, you know, um, or everyone has just um, hated them. Um, they've even found dirt on on William, who is supposed to be the clean one. Um, but Mary doesn't have any of that. Mary is just too clean cut. Um, so I think she's way more preferred than the British family right now. And, um, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but there's some, there's always some sort of deep, dark, evil history with the British government and the British royalists that we don't seem to get with the Danes. So I think it's just that they're, they're just a cleaner family. I think they do, um, prefer the Danish royal family, as we said, Mary Donaldson is, is Australia. Um, even though there was that alleged one affair, I think Mary has never set a foot wrong. Never complained, never explained. It's what the British use, but that's also what the Danes use for, you know, when it comes to silencing the media, you know, and you don't see it, a, someone coming out with a book and Tori's stories about their family and how awful their family was, and this, that, and interviews and radio interviews. You don't see any of that. It's what they do is they, they quash something straight away to the point, and that's all you hear about, and then it's gone. Like, this is why people love the Danish royal family because it's just get on with it and move on. And this is a time of, you know, wishing her majesty the queen well she did have a back injury recently and has had an operation she's what 83 now so god bless you your, uh, your majesty um and i think a lot of people for many years to come are going to be rooting for mary next question how will you be celebrating this momentous day leon Oh, I doubt, well, obviously I can't be up to be watching the celebrations. I don't even think any networks covering the celebrations here in Australia, but um, I have no doubt that we will see on the news tomorrow morning around five o'clock, six o'clock or whatever, uh, we will see highlights of the, of the celebrations. So I guess I'll be obviously celebrating that way by watching the highlights on the news. Luna. How will you be celebrating this momentous day? Um, maybe I might watch. I may I might be able to watch it live. If I'm up, I'll probably watch a little bit of it. Um, feeling. I don't know why. I don't. I don't usually feel patriotic, but I'm feeling kind of proud that an Australian like up there, fallen in love with a royal and gotten up there. Um, you know, so good on her. Hope she has a good day. Like it's. How are you be celebrating this momentous day? The first thing I'm going to do is sleep until two o'clock. No, um, I might go out. <laughs> I might go out and actually buy some Danish beer. Um, I heard Danish beer is good. Um, and if I do manage to see um, a pre-recording of the tape, I might actually watch it. Um, and drink a lot of Danish beer. I might actually try and find um some nice recipes what they might actually have in Denmark and cook that up for Kat just so she can get into the thing. Don't forget uh, the Danish cookies. Yeah, well, we'll get Danish cookies. Yes, 
We'll get that. We'll get a whole box of Danish cookies and, and eat that. And get some. And you'll have to get some Danishes as well. Yeah, that's right. I think for me, Luna's... we'll have to talk. We'll have to. Um, we'll have to basically ask nicely in Danish. Would you like a cookie? You know, <laughs> that's what you'll do. I think for me, Luna said she might be a way to watch it. I think I will be fired up looking at my TikTok, looking at looking up the Danish royal family. And just seeing what live events are popping up and what they're doing and what they're saying and the reactions. I think I'm going to be scrolling TikTok obsessively, waiting for any second of news and footage. And I'm sorry, I'm a proud little Aussie. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm about to cry of happiness. Here we go. Last question. Um, this one's a bit controversial, my parents, but okay. Uh, did Queen Margareta step down to protect? Her own royal family, Leon. Uh, I doubt it. As you said, she's eighty-three years old. She's the first. Uh, she's the first queen to have gone uh, from uh, the royal from the queen's throne in nine hundred years. So, I guess traditions are made to be broken. I don't think that uh, she is stepping down to protect. I think you know it's it's. She's 83 years old, you know, it's time, you know what I mean? I think it's time uh, to move on, I guess, and um, and I think that's what she's done here. Despite the fact that you did say earlier on that, uh, what did you say, she had a back injury or something like that recently? Um, I don't think that would have had much to do with it, but um, <laughs> I think it's the right right time. I think it's the right time to stand down and hand it off to a younger generation and see how they handle it. Exactly. Luna, do you think Her Majesty Queen Margaret ste uh, stepped down to protect her own royal family? I would assume the majority of her reasons come from health concerns. Um, however, there might be a, ta a small part in there that um, <clears throat> knows that if she steps down now, certain things can happen um, while she's still here, um, you know, and thus her being a, a part of the process in, in a way. Okay. Uh, did Her Majesty Queen Margareta step down to protect her own family? She definitely did. Um, okay, so if, most royals, when they go into the royal family, they serve for life, just like Prince Elizabeth did. Okay. This is normal, okay, because um, the a lot of these royal families are connected to religions and they have churches in their own right, um, and the, the Danes are, are no different. Um, but there was a period of time when Mary said to Mary being Mary, basically said, I'm not going to be part of a family if my husband is going to have an affair. So... And you have to remember, remember the, uh, Queen Margaret um, and Mary are very, very close. They're like best friends, okay? They, they've been very, very close. So I reckon uh, Queen Margaret would have had a conversation with Frederick and said, I'm going to step down as queen and I'm going to make sure that you're king, but you cannot abandon your queen, which will be your wife. Okay, and they would have made that deal um, behind closed doors and Frederick would have taken it instead of basically doing what Charles had to do, which was wait until he's really, 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 really old to take the throne. Um, you know, so I think she learnt from Elizabeth's mistake. Or oh, sorry, um, yeah, she learnt from Elizabeth II's mistake and said, it's, it's my time to step down. It's your turn to rule the throne. Mary, it's your turn to become queen. And that's how she protected her family. I I don't know. Um, I am going to go with Leon's answer. That is, she's had health problems. Um, she's had health problems for many years. Even though Queen Elizabeth II, God rest her soul, was her cousin, I don't think Queen Margareta wanted to go through what her cousin went through. You know, old age, illness, you know, she's 83, bless her. And Leon said he's right. It's time for her to step down 
and let the younger generation take over and see how they can manage it and how they can hold it hold up with it because this way it gives the Danes a fresh new eyes to look through and a more modern and sophisticated way of doing things there are thousands and thousands of years of tradition yes but modern traditions need to come into play now and god bless her for being able to last this long you know she'll be known as you know queen mother so Queen Margareta is, you know, someone who is dignified and elegant and sophisticated and classy. And having someone like Mary, who's exactly the same, not one foot wrong ever. And I think this is going to be the way of the future. And there has been, I don't know, Leon, if you've heard this, but apparently William and Charles have had a secret pact or agreement that um, within five years, Charles will step down, making way for him to become the new ruler. That's that's what I've heard. That wouldn't surprise me, considering, unfortunately, Charles had to wait 50 or so years in order for him to become king. William won't have to wait. Hard, William won't have to wait anywhere near that length of time. The only person that would have to wait that long a time would be, would be William's uh, oldest kid. Yeah, but... That's the thing, right? That's what I've heard recently when they were talking about the Danish royal family is that they were saying that apparently King Charles would have made a pact with William saying within five years I'll step down, you know, and you can become king because he's 75 now, he'll be 76 to see King Charles. So you look at five years, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81. At, at 81, he's not going to be able to <coughs> go wave or you know, they're worried about his, his hands, his fingers, you know, and I just I just think it's, as you said, it's time for the younger generation. And if this is a nod to William, then I think it should happen sooner rather than later. As much as I do love King Charles, I think it's time to follow in Queen Margaret's step footsteps and to stand down. Just, just to let William on the throne to lead the country and lead the Commonwealth. But other than that, this was a great fun topic i don't know for anyone else but for me it felt so good <laughs> how do you say that that last comment that you made about they're worried about his his hands and his fingers to the point where he can't actually do this can't, can't, kind of thing that just kind of made me laugh inside when, it, when you when your fingers are that big mate it's time to step down that's it i'm, I'm sorry but 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 yeah your your finger your fingers are, are, are too frail to lead did you, Great. did you see his fingers at the coronation? They look the size of sausages. And I bet he can't even do this now. Hey. That's true. I'm he, sure there's he, another lot of things he can do with those fingers. I don't, I don't believe that he's ever done that. No, but the thing is, apparently he, I watched the, the I watched the whole, se the, the document, the whole docu on, uh, on, on YouTube, um, coronation -y behind the scenes and he was telling William you don't have sausage fingers like I do because William has his mum's hands he has Spencer hands and he has sausage fingers which means his hands fill with fluid and they go red and they they exactly. go he just he, the circulation is getting cut off in his hands as well probably probably a combination of arthritis slash my mum had arthritis and her hands used to swell pretty big so um, it wouldn't surprise me London is like a really sophisticated country, right? So surely someone can build a hand machine that can wave for him. Maybe he can employ servants to do it. I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for joining us. We, on behalf of all of us at Catspace, myself, Buckets, Luna and Leon, we wish Her Queen, Her Majesty Queen Margareta all the best. And congratulations, King Frederick Ted. And congratulations. I'm really proud to say this. Oh my God. Congrats, Queen Mary. Finally, it's happening. We wish you a very long reign. God bless you both. From Australia to Denmark, it's roll time. Bye. Bye. Yeah.